Well, let's take a look back at this menu here. We're on item number one. Uh, this is a 1965 Plymouth Barracuda. Uh, this is when I was at the Newport, Vermont car show this summer in, uh, I think it was on August 6th. Um, I'll let the uh, the owner of the car do the talking. Let me just take a second here to load that and we'll we'll have a look at it. Back from Waterbury, Vermont. This is my uh, 1965 Plymouth Barracuda. I had it for about 20 years. It's been restored, obviously. Uh, 273 V8, and uh, otherwise it's uh, all stock. Wow. Very cool. And you've had about 20 years, you say? Yep. Beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another quick announcement here. The 5015 drawing is still going on. Come on Anything with the interior that's been done? or? Very nice. There will be a second round here for the podcast. Hey, 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 20, 20 years ago. What would you call that shade? Is that like almost like a teal green? or say, um, Car number 40. If you'd like to come up with oh, I've got to think of it. we got quite a few more door prices um, up here, so pay attention. If I call your number, you're going to right. up and yeah, a prize. It escapes me now. I just had, I had it a minute ago. That's all right. Well, while you're thinking of it, I want to get a shot of your matching shirt. Okay, it's, it's uh, turquoise poly. Turquoise poly. This is a factory color, yep. Nice, and that's got a little flake in it too, doesn't it? Yep, yep. Very nice. That's a unique color. It's got some nice Kragers on there. Yep. Love this one. I remember these big windows in the, when I was a kid. Windows, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I want to get a shot of the backside too. Yeah, that is nice. Let's see if I can get this angle. The auto shop in Williston did the body job. Okay, yeah. So actually, I'm going to come around this way and try mm -hmm. to get a panoramic of it. Hi, thank you. Well, cool, yeah. Uh, we'll go, I guess, uh, top to bottom. Uh, Michael, any reactions to that car? Yes. Um, I've seen a lot of these cars, and I'm not really 1% sure when they went from the name Barracuda to just Cuda. Uh, that's the one thing. Um, second thing, the back end of the car, it's just like the Corvette. It had uh, Basically, they had the same idea, but they had to change it a little bit because maybe Plymouth and GM, you know, you can't have it look exactly like a Corvette back end, so they had to change it. But you look at it, it looks like an upside down canoe. Um, yeah. Same idea as the early Corvettes, uh, you know, and it's really amazing because that is a unique style. And that window, if you ever had a car with bad visibility, this is one car that never had bad visibility uh, for rear view. <laughs> for sure. That is a huge window. And you're right. I never considered that, you know, comparing that to the Corvette, like the old split window, and when the, when they didn't have that split in the window, they're very similar. Yep. You're right. Yeah, I'd never considered that, but you're absolutely right. But uh, because Rob? if you think about the Cor Corvette, I mean, you think about it. I mean, it basically has the same idea, but they had to widen it out because they don't want to copy exactly what Corvette did. It's just like yeah. Ford and Dodge with the pickup trucks. Dodge. Oh, was it about two or three years later Ford decides to come out with something that's very similar yeah no doubt no doubt and Rob reactions to this uh, Barracuda oh I love the back window on it I'd hate to see the value to replace something like that oh yeah oh, if you can even find one is expensive yeah nice. it's especially the wrap around 273 engine in it I think it's what he said yeah yeah that's not a common motor wow. no it's good I looking mean, Swing that around for another shot of that engine there. I'm trying to figure out what the license plate meant. Old fish. Yeah, I don't know where he's going yeah. with that either. It must be an inside joke. Yeah. And in Virgil? Yeah, I was going to comment the same thing Rob said, that back window. That would be a, a hard one to replace, you know, or yeah. find. Uh, back when I used to work at a Ford dealership, one of my friends had one of these, and that's what he used to say is that back window. He's like, I'd hate to have to replace this. Yeah. 
no doubt. That would, that would take some money. Oh, and we've got comments coming in. Let's see. Oh, we've got our friend David from Alaska Railroad. He's saying, good evening, Mike. Got your Facebook message, and I'm glad you did, David, because we've got something really cool a little later in the podcast I think you're really going to like. Uh, and David is also saying hello to Rob, Mike, and Virgil. Hey. Hello, hello. David. hello. And then also our good friends Stacy and Art Fosler are in the house. He's saying he had one once that had the same 273 V8 engine. Yeah. Cool deal. Cool deal. And I almost think this is like when I was maybe four or five years old. My, I think my aunt and uncle had a car like that because I remember that that big rear window like that. And I, I almost think that they had one uh, back when I was a real little kid. I almost think I remember seeing that. And Virgil, I think they even had a couple of years where they actually had a split, split window. Same idea, but I think it was a split window. Split window? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does that have that um, that also like the two plus two, like the uh, like the Mustang where you got to lift up that back seat there? Oh, yeah, because it's got a deck that's folded down there. But I bet if you fold that deck up, there's a, there's a rear seat. Because I remember my cousins used to ride back there. Looks like little, yeah, here we go. Area. Looks like a passion area for the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I do know the uh, that Mustangs uh, tend to be to have that kind of idea too uh, on some of the early models. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen the crease in there, Mike. I believe it does. It does fold up. Cool deal. Click the link in the description for your free AMSOIL catalog. It's time for a quick shout out to some of our friends. B&B Auto Sales, your muscle car connection in Brookings, South Dakota. Above the Notch Car Club, a car club for auto enthusiasts in Northern New Hampshire. The New Hampshire Muscle Car Club, the largest muscle car club in all of New England. MGM Classic Cars in Addison, Illinois. Visit MGMClassicCars.com today. Beach Hill Automotive in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, specializing in the repair, service, and towing of muscle cars and classic cars. Absolute Auto Body and Collision Repair in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. And lastly, I am your independent AMSOIL dealer. Click the link in the description for your free AMSOIL catalog. And last but not least, if you decide to advertise with the Muscle Car Podcast, this could be part of your advertising message. Well, good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. I have a robust lineup of Muscle Car Entertainment on tap for you tonight, but before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, please let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. Now to our first-time viewers, if this is your first time hanging out with us tonight, I hope you have a great time and I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Uh, keep in mind uh, that this podcast simulcasts to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night. So we're, wherever you're viewing this, uh, just circle back in one week's time and we'll be here waiting for you. Now, to our regular viewers who are here week after week, month after month, and season after season, you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we very, very much appreciate that. So without any further ado, let's bring our friends on. <coughs> Pardon me, bring our friends on and get the party started. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Very good. Oh, doing good. Yep. Yeah, still in the dream. Still in the dream. Absolutely. So uh, to to you guys and also to our viewers, uh, are we experiencing a heat wave uh, where you're viewing this from? Definitely here. 
Yeah, I'm getting tired of it. I'm yeah, same snow. here. But yeah. 83, 83 with humidity, so. But that's yeah, for sure. not, not like I was in California in the hundreds, so I, I'm able to deal with it. Sure, sure. I've got my fan club all around me, meaning I've got a whole bunch of fans in here, and it's it helps, but it's not quite where I'd like it to be. But we're getting through it okay. Oh, you mean you got no AC? No, <laughs> we're old school. Uh, you got to turn it a little bit higher, Mike, so you get that Beyonce effect. Yeah. <laughs> I got my AC on. My AC has been on steady for the last four days. Crazy, oh. man. So we do have Stacy and Art Fosler in the house. They're regular viewers, and tonight they're in Myrtle Beach viewing the podcast. Normally they're in upstate New York. Uh, thank you both so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you're doing any car shows down there, if you manage to get any footage, we would love to share that on the podcast for everyone to enjoy. Uh, so let me get in the right spot here. Let's look at what we've got on tap tonight. Item number one is some footage from Bentley's uh, Cruise Night, Bentley Saloon up in Arundel, Maine. We have a lot of friends of the podcast who go to that on a regular basis. One of them is our good friend Derek Rabita. He does the Japanese mini truck YouTube channel. He, it's an excellent channel. There are links to it in the description. So if you like what you're about to see, uh, click on that link and, and take a look. He does a, a wonderful uh, YouTube channel. So let me cue this up here. We'll take a look. And on the other side, we will react to it. And as always, the first video always takes a moment to load. <laughs> I've got to get some Jeopardy music to play while it's doing that. All right, Jer All right Virgil. There you go. This All right. Jer okay this is this is a cool little clip we have three purple vehicles together at bentley's had to had to pull up they were parked together i've parked next to both of them at different places different times but this is just cool barracuda 70 challenger and the uh nissan hard body a little uh doesn't fit as well but it's pretty cool nonetheless well, this isn't something you get to see every day. We got an old '60s Mustang with a little, uh, little bed in here. Yeah, full custom car, beautiful blue interior, powered by a 289. This is a '66. I guess it's a 150 prototype that was made. Wow, quite a car, man. On some old American racings. I like it. <laughs> it's just not something you see. Oh, I heard it open up. <laughs> Wow, this thing is sick. Pretty cool to see over here. It's a, like a matte black kind of old school hot rod style 62 Impala. Loving the red interior. And I had to look on the ground for this one. It is bagged. It's got a really nice stance too. Sitting real low like that. Goldwing Mercedes 300 SL. What a beauty. Always cool to see these. Actually, I know the Ford version is the Econo line, but I, I can't remember what the Dodge was called. I know like uh, the drag car was a little red express, but man, these are sweet. We got Shaq rolling through. Sean rolled up with his LS400. Ooh. And to add to the bag trio for today, we got Don Small's Ranger. Oh, I didn't notice the halo headlights. That's sweet. Yes. <laughs> Yo, that is a legit Renault Turbo. Okay, I'm actually really excited to make this clip. This is a car I've like just always wanted to see in person. It's a Renault Turbo. It's a 1981. It says it's the R5, R5 Turbo. Wow, look at the seats in this. The designs, even on the door panels, we got some stripes. Check out the steering wheel, Lex. It's shaped like an L. <laughs> what? It's crazy. Legit homologation this car. Wow. Beautiful to see. Full wide body compared to like an original, obviously, and it's all straight from factory. <laughs> what a what a beautiful car. The knob to get in, you just push that little lever. Wow, that is nuts. So right over here is something I've never seen before. We have a Cobra 2 with three superchargers and two turbos. Kind of a kind of nuts this thing like stands almost as tall as me. Wonder if he's ever gone pulled over and gotten some uh, pretty questionable questions on that. Called double trouble. This is your view from inside the car, I mean. That is crazy. 
So right over here we have this about mid 50s Ford pickup. He's definitely got a full custom grill in the front here, shaved bumper with some pinstriping accents down there. I think right here is some old school Chrysler 300 headlights. And uh, I mean, someone really knocked it out of the park with this pinstriping. All the blues and purples shaded perfectly too custom louver hood i mean this has a lot of like the old school traditional customs accents the full chrome hubcaps with the white walls this truck is a full-time roadster you got the billet wipers louvered hood check this thing out someone has put some serious time all custom interior walk down the back this way i mean this is just cool you got the old school old truck bed like actually i think it is also a 50s truck bed now that i think about it but here, regardless, we got some 59 Cadillac taillights, another big old school custom look. And right here, this tailgate takes a lot of work to just like, you gotta really be able to appreciate something like that. Look how beautiful that's done. All the louvers have like perfect shading as well. Yeah, this is a quite a truck to see here. That's another neat little uh, ride right here. I had to really take this in. So it might actually be a regular K5 Blazer with the removable top. I don't know if they ever came like that, but they definitely made it a convertible because you can see the cut in the door, which isn't a bad thing. These things are having a lot of fun with this, and I love that. But I was just trying to figure out, I was like, man, did they make an old school 60s blazer? Well, could be even be like a 70 around there uh, blazer, though, with a removable top like we have now in like the 90s. And even the 80s had them. So kind of a cool concept, but I like it. Looks good. Gorgeous. Simply put, you walk down it, and you see that flake just in the paint. Transfers to almost like a pink. It's this nice, uh, man, I I'm just going to call it a pearl color. The car is like a, a pearl, green pearl maybe, with that beautiful red flake i mean what a sweet ride old, old school little ford i'm not sure what year exactly but look at the gold faced gauges as well i mean this is just just cool like what an outstanding build so right over here we have a chopped 1934 chevy check out the license plate it says cool with the moon eyes so that's why i went with the cues i love that he's on some old school 90s boyds that are polished right up. This car was definitely done up in the 90s, even in the pinstriping. Look at that 34 Chevy. I love that. <coughs> Digital gauges in there. I mean, all that interior is very 90s. The hood opens up on just one side, like. Wow. That is a cool car. Yeah, so thank you so much to Derek Rabita for that amazing footage. I got to give him credit. He has an eye for really interesting cars, and he's really good at talking them up. And if you liked what we were looking at, that was just part one. We're going to be looking at part two later in the podcast. But uh, we'll go uh, right down the vertical here. Uh, Michael, reactions to that? Yeah. Um, when I'm looking at these vehicles, and that, I'd say it's probably a, I want to say a Fox body Mustang, but um, I think it was a Mustang too, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with the uh, multiple uh engine compartments uh i think he said carburetor or something it was one stacked on top of the other yeah i've seen big cars, that, that's that's one I, I have to admit that it's just something that you i never seen i've seen big engines but nothing like that <laughs> that was pretty outrageous i'm trying and to then, find uh, it and, and then the last in the last car the red one that was there uh that he mentioned that one i think i've actually seen uh believe it or not um everything on it the pinstriping all looks very familiar like i've seen that car before and that renault that you just passed was another big feature car and that i was very surprised because you don't see renaults around too often especially this model i've never even seen this this is the first yeah, especially in r5 that was a hot car in the early 80s too yeah so, yeah for sure and then the last one you were talking about uh yeah right there that i think yeah. it was a 34 it said yeah beautiful i mean that sound it looks like a, a one i've seen around here at times so the guy might have made a, a quick trip up north maybe with it who knows quite possible yeah and virgil reactions virgil I well don't i think know his screen is locked up ah, oh here we go yeah, it's that, uh, that Mustang with the uh, with the bed on there. Yeah, I thought that was Let something current, but a prototype. That was pretty cool. That was impressive. I've never seen anything like that before. But go ahead. Yeah, yep. it sounded it sounded good once he cut. Once he turned it on, it just sounded the rumble of it. 
Yes. For sure. And Rob? I didn't have no sound for it, but there were some good looking cars there. And I like that black Ford, the way they had the blue flames right in the paint job. Lots lots yeah. of lacquer over top. That looked really sharp. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. It was a gorgeous I like that paint Fiat job. Too. Oh, there yeah, you go. This one here? That's a great paint job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I like like you said, Rob, the blue flames instead of the red was a yes was a real big key on that one right there. It was really, really good. Yep. And, nice you gotta very unique. and you got to remember, it's a blue metallic for what it looks like. Yeah. 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 And now we've got comments coming in from viewers. Let's see. We've got uh, our good friend David from Alaska Railroad saying good evening. Good back. To, uh, good evening. Uh, back evening. To you. And then also, uh, this might be Elaine, who we're going to show a video of later in the evening. Uh, she's saying great job to Derek Rabita. Very proud of you. And uh, just as kind of some backstory. Elaine is the one who introduced me to Derek, and I have an image of the two of them, uh, and they both go to B Bentley's quite frequently. Uh, two very good friends of mine, and uh, we thank them both so much for their contribution. They are regular co co uh, contributors to this podcast, and we really appreciate that. Uh, and again, if you like what you were just looking at there, uh, visit Derek's YouTube channel. There's a link to it in the description, and this was just part one. We're going to be looking at part two a little later. Uh, any final com quick comments on this before we move on? Uh Kyle and I, Kyle, there's a, there's a, Kyle was kind of trying to find, he had, there's a Dodge that he kept passing. It was that Dodge A100 there. So it's funny that we just had one on the show there because me and him were just talking about it like over the last couple of weeks. Oh, that little red one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, red like one. the van with a truck bed. Yep. Trying to find uh, that. Well, it's yeah, like that, cool. it's like that old Ford, you know, like that cab over engine, you know? Yep. Yeah. And Virgil, believe it or not, I caught a few of those uh, around here. Lately. Oh, you did? Um, the van version of it, but oh, okay. yeah, I a couple yeah. Of yeah, I'm not seeing it in there. But we do have to move on to the next one, though. Um, yep. But let's see. We're on item number two. It's time for some quick announcements. And, of course, our good friend Rob is going to talk to us about AMSOIL. So if you're ready, Rob, I'm going to put your full screen and uh, and take it away. Hello, everybody. We've talked a lot about Amazon and all the different products they have available. Everybody knows about our OE oil. It's like the regular oil on the market, but it's a synthetic and you change it when your light comes on, but it does give you more performance, better gas mileage. We have the XL oil that it goes twice as long, gives you up to 12% better gas mileage, more performance, more horsepower. And our top of it, and it's like this, it's like mobile one oil. Then we have our top of the line oil, our signature. It's 25,000 miles or one year between oil changes. As high as 25% uh, better gas mileage is what some customers got. And it comes in all the different grades. Amso also has a complete line of European oils. There's about seven different grades of European oils. They go by saps, low saps, medium saps. For the people with the hot rods, like we just seen on the show, we have three different grades of hot rod oil. 10W30, 10W40, and a 20W50. High zinc oil. There is a lot of other zinc oils out there in the market, 600 parts per million. Ours is 1,400 parts per million, twice as much as most of the other companies. And they ask you to ask, have at least 600 parts per million because of your TMs, rocker, and lifters. We have a complete line of the motorcycle oils. And a lot of people with the motorcycle, you have a small 600-pound uh, motorcycle with 80 horsepower, and you get a 10% increase in horsepower, you notice it with the AMS oil. Hmm. And having the oil to run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, and you're sitting on top of it when it's 100 degrees out, that you notice that. And the people riding beside you notice how much cooler you, your bike runs. Complete line of ATV oils, 10W40 to 5W50, 0W40 for all the ATVs. We have a complete line of dirt bike oils. Uh, we have our HP for, motors, for uh, boat motors, outboards, stuff like that, the marine use. People in the Marine Lusa want a two-cycle. We have a Dominator racing oil. Ah, small engine oils. 10W30, 5W30, a 5W50. You can't use regular oil in a small engine because a small engine has cam rocker and lifters, and you want the zinc. You want to oil with the zinc. So make sure if you buy something, it has a small engine written on the, on the bottle. Compress oils. A lot of compressors, people don't realize that they're running, and they're, when they run, they run really hot. If you can drop the temperature by 20 to 50 degrees, every 10 degrees you drop the temperature in a piece of equipment, doubles the life of the engine. 
Yeah. And we really like to brag about our, our gear lube, our products like that. It comes in a container like a toothpaste. Have you ever tried to dump a bottle like this into a rear end of a car? It's almost impossible. Some of the companies have a pump you put on pop, top, so you got to hold the bottle and try to pump it. This is like a tube tube of toothpaste. You squeeze 100% of it in. Our ADW90, 75W90, our ATV oil, automatic transmission fluid, all comes in these easy packs squeeze bottles. And we talked about how you can save money by being a preferred customer with Amsoil. You pay 10 bucks, you buy everything directly from Amsoil. The signature oil we were just showing you, uh, 25,000 miles in one year, and it's $192 for a case. That works out like $16 a bottle. You buy it as a preferred customer, $141. The XL, you get it for uh, nine, nine bucks, you get it for, it retails for 13. The OE retails for $10, you get it for 750. All the way down the line. Uh, the boat oil, the HP, four of these big ones come in a box. A box of this retails for 217, you get it for 158. That's $50 a case you're saving. And it only costs you $10. But right now, as being a preferred, if you order $49 worth, they're gonna give you free shipping, but they're all gonna also send you a bottle of stabilizer. Why is stabilizer important? I know up here in Canada, they've uh, added ethanol to our super. We only had it in the regular before, and now we have it in everything. And if your piece of equipment's gonna be sitting for more than a month, you want a stabilizer in there, stop the ethanol from separating. This bottle of stabilizer retails for, gotta look on my sheet, $11.69. And as a preferred customer, you're gonna get it on this month's deal for $5 for a bottle. So for $10, you get a membership, you're gonna save $10 on stabilizer, and you add one ounce to two and a half gallons of gas. So this 16 ounce bottle is going to do eight, two and a half gallon gas cans. I have people that use it in their hot rods. I have them using their small engines. I have them using their outboards just because the ethanol is in everything. We had one of our schools do a test one time and regular gas is 10% ethanol. So if you fill your tank up and you fill your tank up once a week after two months, you're up to 12% ethanol. After six months, you're like 16% ethanol because the ethanol stays in the top. So unless you run your tank right down empty, Every tank you're adding your ethanol level higher, higher, and all of a sudden you run down less than a quarter of a tank, you're gonna run into problems. Vehicles don't run good at 20% ethanol. Two cycles will not run at all at 15% ethanol. So Mike's got a thing on your on his lead. You can look up to find out how to be a preferred, preferred customer for only $10. Buy the Amsoil products directly from Amsoil. And for this till September 26th, I think it is, you're gonna get a free bottle of this for only $5, August 30th to September 12th. And if you want um, one of the magazines, we have uh, a Power Sport one, we have uh, um, a Factory Direct Book. There we go, Factory Direct Book. And it'll tell you how to buy Amsoil, and it has the prices right in the book. So we don't hide the prices, how much you save. So Mike has an email you can click on and learn how to get a catalog to find out about the prices, or you can sign right up there as a preferred customer and have the big savings. And if you get any questions about Amsoil, what product to use or how to use it, we're here to help you. Absolutely. And like uh, Rob said, just click the link in the description. It's a great way to get started. And when you sign up under me, I'm signed up under Rob. So Rob and I both benefit. And this is how we support this habit of doing this podcast. So we thank you so much uh, for your support on that. And thank you also to the people who have been doing that along. We really appreciate that. Now we've got a comment that's come in. Let's take that real quick. And uh, oh, this is this is Elaine. She says, uh, Derek is her godson as well. And he's doing great. Well, that is wonderful. Cool deal. Cool deal. So let me find my place here. We are on item number three. We're going to take a look at a 1967 Pontiac GTO, and this car is for sale by our friends at MGM Classic Cars. So uh, let me cue that video up here and take a look. I think you guys are going to like this, and we'll react to it on the other side. Everybody, it's Earl, MGM Classic Cars in Addison, Illinois, mgmclassiccars.com. Check out this 1967 Pontiac GTO All Original. Repeat, All Original. Same owner since 1973. Car's been just sitting in their garage. This car is a All Original beauty. You know, you don't find them. It's got some issues, you know, being All Original, but it's never been redone. But if you're into the All Original stuff and want to spend a few 
dollars working on certain things. This is the car. I mean, it's a 400 factory numbers matching with the TH400 transmission. Clean, clean, clean. 66,000 original miles on this car. Sat in a collection of about, I think there's like 30 cars at the warehouse. This one was the only one that was all, all original. Runs out great. We're gonna take it for a ride. It's got power steering, power brakes. Look how this thing lines up. No fights. All your front chrome is good. All your lights are working the way they should. Marker lights, your grill is in good shape. The cold paint still shines a little bit. Original hubcaps, little factory alarm. Look at the gap. That's the gap you want. Side vent windows. All your chrome and moldings are good. Now it gaps the way it should. No break in the paint at all. Really nice. All your chrome on the bottom's good. Rear bumper, okay. Not perfect, but not bad. It's got a couple little, you know, like bumped it into the garage as its life went on, but still good. Look at that, all original quarters. Top is in good shape. Got some paint flaws in here, being an original car. See them? The glass is good, top is good, the chrome around the window's good. Rear passenger quarter's fine, couple little chips and stuff, but we're talking never touched. Show you the gap again, right there. Boom, that's what you want. Got a little bit of a scratch here. I mean, for originality, this is it. There's a bunch of books that go with it, paperwork. I took a picture of the, the title that we got from the customer. It's from 1973. It will be on, there's all your books and stuff in there. It will be on our website, mgmclassiccars.com. Wipers are working, tech is working. So you can take a look at that as well. It's really cool. Interior is in great shape for an original car. So it has like the little wear and tear. Glass all of its own, all original, all, you know. Seat belts are intact, your, your back deck. Look at those old speakers back then, I love it. Have liner, your seats are in great shape. Door panel's good. Sixty-six thousand two hundred and thirty-eight miles. Dash is good. Carpets are good. His and her shifter. You know what? Let me open up the hood. I think I already did, but let's just double check so you can hear it run. Hold on, I'm putting you down for a second, folks. Numbers matching 400. Nothing modified, just the way it came. Running really nice. Located in Addison, Illinois, just 20 minutes southwest of O'Hare Airport. We've got over 170 vehicles in stock. All our pictures and photos, video are online. Oh, she scoots. Brakes well. I'll give you my phone number in a little bit if you have any questions on this car or any of our other cars in stock. Brakes are good, handles well. For an original car, this thing is really nice. GTO, baby. That's it. Right there. Runs out good. Goes through the gears. Let's take it for a little run. She peels them off. Oh, yeah. Brakes good. We're located in Addison, Illinois. We're open 
Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. No funky noises when we're turning. Saturday from 10 to 2, all by appointment only. Wow, really drives nice, folks. This is a really nice original car. I have shipping all over the United States, bonded and insured. So give me a call at 773-600-0919. My name is Earl, that's 773-600-0919. Got 45,000 square foot showroom with all our cars inside and service. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got videos coming out every day or so. We own everything, nothing's on consignment. So we take a take some pride in what we do. You're gonna know what you're getting. This is a real nice car for being all original, not needing anything. It's turned kill though. Well. When it warms up, it really wants to kick. Here's our service center. So give me a call when you get a chance. 773-600-0919. My name is Earl. Thanks for spending some time on this 67 all original GTO. Have a great day. There'll be more to come. Bye. Yeah, so thank you so much to Earl from MGM Classic Cars. Great looking original car. We'll go from the bottom up this time. Rob, reactions to that? Oh, that's, that was always one of my favorite cars. Matter of fact, I was just on their site trying to find it. Uh -huh. I, did, I did find a 89 Grand National on there with only 9,000 kilometers on it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't found that one yet. I'm trying to find it. For original car, that's a nice looking car. It sure is. Definitely. Virgil? Uh, like... Like Rob, I, I hopped on the website trying to look for it. I found another GTO that they have there. Yeah. Not that one yet. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, it brings back memories. My cousin had a 67 Le Mans. Uh, you know, pretty much the same thing. My you know, but it had that 320s, 327 in there. Yeah. But you know, totally different motor. But oh the inside just yeah, brings back a lot of memories. A for lot sure. of fun. Iconic, That'd be a fun sure. car to have. Definitely. And Michael? Well, I can say one thing. I know my girlfriend's listening to the podcast, and this is going to be uh, the car of the year she was born. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, and I'm always trying to find the car the year I was born. So far, it's the Corvette, but I just don't like being on the ground. I like to get something like this, but I want to get something that I really love in 74. And I wasn't crazy about the 74 Monte Carlo. So I can't see my Carlo, but uh, at least, you know, she's got a good car here at 67. It'd be perfect for her. Yeah, this is sweet. And we've got a comment that's come in, too. Let's take a look. Oh, here we go. Kimberly Benoit. Uh, we're going to be looking at her, I believe, her husband's car here in just a few minutes. She says, thank you guys for airing my dad's Caballero. He would have loved this. And if he were st still here with us, uh, the whole family appreciates you. And we thank you so much for that, Kimberly. And thank you so much for that amazing car. In fact, what a perfect segue. We're just about to look at that car. So let me um, take this video off, uh, go where I need to be, and we're going to queue up this very car that, that Kimberly was just talking about. Uh, so this is a, uh, let's see, item number four. This is John Benoit's 87 GMC Caballero. Uh, Virgil, and I went, Virgil and I went to the Waterbury, Vermont car show a few weeks ago on the 13th, and we got this interview uh, with John. Let me pull it up here, right here. What a perfect segue. So this is uh, my father in laws 1987 GMC Caballero. Um, got it from his father as a graduation gift. Um, registered it, stickered it once, drove it. Um, the winter time when he parked it, found out that he was uh, having a wife. And it's not a family vehicle, it's only two, two seats in it, so it got parked and been sitting in storage and all that fun stuff for a while since he took it to a car show in 2010, the GM Nationals at Carlisle, showed it there. Oh, wow. Now, is that what's on the seat here? Oh, there's a picture of. That's my father-in-law. He passed oh, away wonderful. two years ago. That's a nice way to remember him. Yeah. And this is the sticker from the GMC Nationals. Oh, yeah. Nice. And award, some awards over there. And uh, so we decided for the first time in a while to bring it back up and show people and just have a good time. So it off. Beautiful. Yeah. Will this be yours one day? Maybe. Cool. <laughs> Do you look forward to that day? Mm, I don't really know. Not sure? 
Apparently it's got 47.9 miles on it. 47.9? 47.9. That's amazing. Yeah. Everything's all original. Uh, not our bolt on here that wasn't there from the factory. So. Really? That's impressive. And hey, what was your name? John. John. Yeah. John Benoit? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Have a good day. Yes, you too. Oh, good. Nice. Sweet. So, there you have it. Yeah, thank you so much to John and Kimberly and to the young man there. I never caught his name, but uh, thank you to all three of them. That was a wonderful experience. And Virgil, you were there that day just a few feet away. I'll let you react to it first. Oh, yeah. I was, I was telling Mike it was like I was, it just brought back memories of my aunt. She had one of those. She had a tan one, and I can always spot a caballero out of the uh, out of the line up there. But just a great all around car. And the the youngster there, he really he really got alive at the end when he thought you know the, the anxious to see it on YouTube, you know. So, yes, you're right. Because at first I wasn't sure if he was interested in it, and then all yeah, of a sudden he yeah. kind of he showed some interest, and that was wonderful. Yeah. So yep, there you go, yeah. young man. And I have to admit, too, I surprised him, too. I kind of swung the camera over to him, and he may not have been prepared for that. So I totally <laughs> understand that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that will probably be his someday. And that's that's a wonderful story around that car. Yeah. But, uh, Michael, reactions? Yes. Um, you know, the kid uh, is going to probably inherit the car. I'm just hoping that he's taught that you got to measure a gap in the spot plugs, unlike the new generation that doesn't realize that you have to measure a gap. <laughs> and I, I remember a 20-year-old, and this guy is, wants to be a mechanic. And uh, when I say, he tells me about the engine, I'm like, yeah, it's a beautiful engine. It's got to be a really a lot of fun for the spot plugs. He said, oh, that's easy. You take them out, put one new ones in. I said, no, you got to measure a gap. For 20 minutes, he's scratching his head trying to figure out what the heck a gap is. <laughs> yeah, I got to gap those plugs. Oh, absolutely. And Rob? Oh, I like it when there's a story behind a car. Yeah. <laughs> there's Me lots too. of cars out there at the shows, but when you find one with a story, I like that. Yeah, I agree. It adds so much to it. And there's a great story with this car, for sure. Multiple, yeah. multiple generations. And you can see the generations ahead waiting for it as well. What did he say the miles was on it? I think 47 or something. Yeah. I think he said 47.2 or something like that. Nice. So I'm assuming he's towing it to these shows, and he, he must have towed it to Carlisle as well. There's no way it would, you know, he would have put those kind of miles on that. But that's a great way to do it, too, with a car in that condition. Yes. And we do have a comment coming in. Here we go. This is Kimberly Benoit weighing in. It's our family's car. Uh, he's watching now, and he is so happy. Very cool. Nice. <laughs> Yes, Good for well, him. Thank you. yes, yes, and thank you so much to Kimberly and John and to the young man there. Uh, just such a great story around that car. Cool deal. So let's see, we're on item number five. We're going to look at some images uh, from our good friend Elaine. Let me pop an image of her on the screen. This is her in this car. Uh, she's the one on the right. And in fact, she messaged me today. There's a story behind this image. Uh, that woman, the woman with her on the left. Um, let me find the notes. She sent me some notes. She said that the woman is Lisa. That is Bentley Warren's longtime girlfriend. I'm assuming Bentley must be the owner of Bentley's. Uh, that T-Bird belongs to Lisa. Uh, she pretty much runs the place, and she says they're very good friends. So very cool about a story uh, behind that as well. So let's take a look. Um, she's got some footage from Bentley's on August 22nd, I think it was. Uh, the car they do a cruise night every Tuesday night. This is from August 22nd, and we're going to talk a little more about Bentley's on the other side. But let's take a look.
So yeah, thank you so much to Elaine for those awesome images. Before we go for comments, reactions to this this uh, montage we just looked at, I have to do a shout out to Bentley Saloon in Arundel, Maine. They're doing their year-end car show Sunday, September 24th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. So if you're in Maine or planning to go to Maine, this is a do not miss event. Uh, so I just wanted to pop that graphic real quick. Uh, reactions, uh, Michael? Yeah, well, uh the Austin uh, Jeep was uh, interesting. Then there was a, a red vehicle. I don't know why it was. I looked at a little logo on the front of the hood, and I'm like, okay. And then right there, <laughs> that Caterpillar truck, I wouldn't mind taking it home. Yes. <laughs> right there. That thing was a beast. I like to know how they wave to drive down there because that's not exactly road legal. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> They must have helicoptered it in with a military helicopter. Uh, I don't even know if that would be able to handle that. That's a lot of weight. For sure. And I know I, I and it's funny because I know there's a caterpillar because if you look right above where it says Warren and you look and you can see a, the old the fashioned top of the letter C stating that it's a caterpillar. Yes. You can see the little bit of top of the letter C up there. Very cool. And Virgil, reactions? Uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff in there, man. I was, uh, what was it? A lot of shoe boxes right there in the in the beginning, and then there was that uh, that USA um, jet looking thing there. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what that. I bet there's a story behind that. Yeah. Right there. I wonder. If, I wonder if that's a motorcycle or what it is. Yeah, that's a good question. But I bet there's a story behind that. And, and Elaine, if you're watching, if you know who owns that or if you know any kind of backstory on that, we'd love to hear it. And we do have com comments coming in. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, this is from Elaine. Thank you so much for sharing. See you this weekend. And then um, also someone saying Tonka truck. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had oh, one of those. Yes. Oh, and we keep losing Rob, unfortunately. Hopefully he comes back on. I think he might be having some connection issues. Oh, here he is. Here we go, Rob. I sound, looks like you're having a little trouble. I lost the sound. Oh, no. What is that picture on the screen right now? United that States. is weird, isn't it? Yeah. And one that's from the U.S. Navy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then uh, David from Alaska Railroad says he really likes that blue Caprice Classic. And I have to agree, that caught my eye as well because the condition mm -hmm. of that, especially the front end, is unbelievable. Yeah, to be that big, it's just a nice big boat, nice big boat convertible, you know? You didn't sure. worry about gas mileage or something like that, did you? No. <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, cool. Well, cool. Let me take this off the screen here. We are on item number seven. So earlier in the podcast, we looked at some footage again from Bentley's. Uh, this is from our friend Derek at the Japanese Mini Truck YouTube channel. We looked at part one at the beginning of the podcast. Now we're going to take a look at part two. And I just have to say, if you like what you're about to see, be sure and check out his YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. He does an excellent channel, very much worth a look. And please uh, patronize him because he's a good friend and he, he uh, contributes a lot to this podcast. We really appreciate it. So let's take a look at this clip. Oh, there it goes. Interesting car nonetheless. Oh, this is sick. It's a California special Ford Mustang. It's got like the Shelby taillights though. This is sick, is it? I mean, I'd assume it would probably be some sort of Shelby. Man, it's not, but it has all the same like characteristics with the extra fogs. That is cool. I'll have to go walk around there. So this is a little bit closer of a walk around. We got some cool striping on here. I'm going to go off the basis that everything is probably pretty factory on this car. So right here you can see the trunk lid has a molded in lip. These little side panels also uh, just kind of tie in with the whole lip. You got the California special emblems, some interesting wheels. They're not too, too sporty for what you would figure would be on like a, you know, a modified version of a factory car. Even this, you know, even though it's a factory car. This is pretty interesting though. I've never seen the, uh, the horn extension essentially. I don't know, it's just supposed to be something that's supposed to comfort your forehead when you get into a front end collision or something. I'm not too, too sure on that. It's got some really nice blue interior though. Headliner looks pretty mint as well. Hey, nice car, man. Over here, it's powered by a 289. 
And again, like I said, you have the extra fog lights as well. So uh, I was talking to the owner just a little bit. He said there was about 4,100 of these made just in 1968. And essentially what it was is like, you basically get a big list of options and you get to check off the boxes for the options. He was saying that uh, vice versa, the, the Shelby possibly had taken hues from this uh, as far as things like the Thunderbird taillights and all sorts of other cool things. But essentially you could get like any engine transmission combo, different hoods, different grills, which is just like, that's super cool to hear to me. And um, right in there, he's like, even there, there's like a little bit more of a bump in the transmission tunnel. So if you want the bigger engine or four speed or whatever, you don't have to cut anything out. It's all just ready to go. So it's a really interesting car that uh, Ford had a part in way back in the day. This is a pretty unique car to see. We have a 1964 Ford Galaxy R code the plate and that's a pretty interesting you don't see too many r code cars around this one says it has documented low mileage highly optioned including am fm radio vinyl roof bumper guards fender skirts this car is powered by a 427 i don't know if it was just like a fully optioned out i mean you know it's got a nice little va i think it's the four speed right over there i mean it has like the little analog clock and everything i mean it's really pretty in here though this interior is awesome just like unlike anything I've seen. And it does have a really nice white vinyl roof. We'll walk around the back here. Here's the trunk display. And uh, yep, this must be the little bumper guards. But pretty cool. I imagine it's just like a factory spec'd out car. I guess unique enough as well, there's a 63 white Ford Galaxy Park right next to this one with red interior as opposed to the blue and a regular painted hard top. And yeah, right here, you can see like the difference in options. This one's definitely more of a base model, no radio or anything like that right there. As this one has like all the options you could want. Pretty cool to see though. This one is also powered by the 427. I guess instead of the term base model, uh, they have it as factory lightweight, which is uh, pretty ironic because I mean, it's still gonna be a pretty heavy car, but obviously it's, uh, you know, just to get rid of some of those extra options that add weight to make it initially a little bit faster car. I guess another cool thing to note as well is things like the center console don't exist in this and there's no carpet it's like rubber mat so i mean that is pretty cool all in all at the end of the day and uh even back here yeah there's no carpet nothing just i and i, I believe that's just how it came as opposed to that one you got the spare tire and the carpet this must this might have had a spare tire from factory but I, they might not have added one just to aim to be extra light so I had to grab some clips of this. It's pretty unique. It's a 64 Chevrolet Malibu SS. This one's definitely got that show car aspect. So I'm walking around. And, oh, this is cool. Every time I every time I look over, I keep seeing new details. So we got a little, uh, I think it's a Panther etched into the glass there. I like the little mirrors of the Chevy emblem on them. And it's taste for the most part. It's pretty tastefully done. I really like that. Like, you know, sometimes you see cars and they go a little too over the top, but this is really clean. There's some things I actually wanted to grab pictures of to show my brother because I just... Oh, look at that little GM emblem, but I love this. It's 64 Chevelle Malibu SS etched into the chrome plate. It looks good. Like, that's a really nice showpiece. And then, right, like, right over here, just nice, subtle, just white halos. It's clean. It's simple. And this, uh, just this little, this little breather cap is super cool as well. You got the uh, custom hood insulation here, the little model car there. And if we walk over to here, this is uh, something I've never seen in an older, uh, older, we'll say muscle car. It's a uh, full for sure custom interior on a swivel seat for the driver's seat. All the uh, headliner looks done as well. It's pretty neat though. It's nice. It's a cool color contrast. I really like it. A lot of a lot of nice upgrades on it though. Seriously, as I, as I walk around, I notice things like the electric fans and stuff. So yeah, very cool. It's a lot of options with the old Chevy 350s and especially these older cars. So right here, we have the car and right down here, it's awesome, this car. That is some dedication. I love that, man. <laughs> hey, let's go. We're in the Porsche to match. So let's get it. I was over there talking, and look at our lineup of cars going out to Oob. Well, the cavalry is here. They all I think they're all waiting on me. So we gotta, we gotta get out of here. Let's do it. Cool. Yeah. So thank you so much to Derek for that amazing footage. Again, if you like what you saw, he's got a whole YouTube channel with a lot more just like that. Link in the description. Please patronize his channel. He's a great supporter of this podcast. Uh, whose turn is it to go first? Is it Virgil's? Uh, I, well, I'll go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's those galaxies. Yes. Uh, the galaxy just it blows me away there. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that one there with the blue interior, just the heavily options, you know. But, you know, I know they those uh, that lightweight one, you figure they had that just for racing. Yes. And I like how he had them, they had them side by side like that so you could compare them. Yeah. For sure. And uh, and Rob? Both Galaxies are all four speeds, it looks like, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shifter sticking out of it. They're nice looking cars. Yes. Yeah. And Michael? And uh, 
I like the idea about having two cars identical to each other, but being different years. And the same yeah. thing happened at Diamond Hill Road at the Creeks show in Cumberland. They had two Plymouth um, cars right next to each other. One was a 64 and one was a 67. And it's like, wow, the same car, but you can see the major differences in the years. But I love it when exactly the same make and model cars next to each other. Because then you can compare the differences in a matter of a couple of years. For sure. That is very cool. And we do have comments coming in. Let's see. We've got, uh, this must be from Elaine. She's given us a lot of hearts, which is great. Hearts back to you as well. And then uh, Stacy and Art Fosler is saying the 60, 64 Chevelle is a nice car. Absolutely. And then um, David from Alaska Railroad says, did that Malibu actually come with swivel seats? Thought that was a 70s Monte Carlo thing. That's a good question. Yeah, they didn't come with those. That's the aftermarket because even that uh, that headliner looks suede in there also. Yeah, so there's probably some custom work in there. Yeah, good well, observation. It, yeah, when the seat was turned to the side, I uh, kind of looked it threw me for a pu puzzled me real quick. I'm like, that's not that that that's not one of those for that. That's not a uh, option for that year. For sure. Yeah, you're right. That started came that came along with '73 ish or so probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because who had that? The Monte Carlo. Who and the that? the Malibu, the Chevelle, the Malibu. Yeah, there was a few other. Yeah. A few others, a couple of other of those with it, but yeah. For sure, and then Stacy and Art Fosler are saying the four twenty seven Ford motors are rare. Yes, indeed. Oh, that's a NASCAR motor. Oh yes, that, yeah. That must be the R code. Yes. And then a little observation I, I made at the end. Um, he said, we're going to OOB. OOB is code if you're from Maine or familiar with Maine. OOB is O-O-B, Old Orchard Beach. So that means that's what they were going there, where they were going to go as a posse after the car show. Just a, just a little nuanced observation there. But uh, any final comments on this, this video clip before we move on? I thought OOB was for Uber, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I thought it was the name of a restaurant they're going to. Yeah, sure. sure. They showed sure us his kid. pickup before. What's that? Has he showed us his pickup before? Yes. Uh, let's see if it's in there. It was at the very beginning. That purple Nissan yeah. hard body, at right there. Uh, yeah. With yeah, the neon lights underneath. At the end too. Yes. And yeah, again, like I said, Derek does an amazing YouTube channel. He's a frequent contributor to this podcast. So please, if you like what you looked at, please patronize him. There's a link to his YouTube channel in the description. He does an amazing job. And I have to say, I love the way he talks up these cars. And I love the, the cars he picks out to talk about. Uh, he, he's got a, he's got a, uh, a nat he's a natural at this kind of work, I have to say. But um, I'm just going to make a note to you, Mike. You might, might want to do uh, number six because you skipped uh, number six. I know that's for Virgil. Yes, so. my my apologies. Good God. I, I'm glad you caught me on that. Thank you. Because I know Virgil has been waiting <laughs> patiently for this stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, oh, I am yes. glad you caught me on that. So let's talk this up proper here. Item number six. Now, these are some images from Michael Delage. And Michael has been talking for the last few episodes about how he has a voluminous collection of, of automotive images. And they're all sorted by year, make, and model. And he's always asking us, you know, if you've got certain cars that you'd like to see, you know, I'll send you some images. And then, of course, I take them and put them into a montage. Well, Virgil's got some cars he's been talking about. So Michael uh, put together a collection of images of three different cars. Uh, and I, he sent them to me and I put them into a montage. So uh, we're going to take a look at this montage here. And this is specifically for Virgil. Let's take a look.
yeah, thank you so much to our own Michael Delage for those amazing images. Virgil, that was for you. Reactions. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, Anytime. that Montego. That Montego is not the not the year that I had, but that one looks so beautiful right there. It looks like it's ready for NASCAR. Yeah. And I unfortunately I didn't have the year you had, but I had one. That I said, well, it's better than none. Hey, yes, and this, this, I, you know, great year. And for, uh, I forgot what year. I know I I told Mike what year these cars were, but I forgot the years. Uh, now on them. That yeah, one looks like handy. 72, maybe. But, I mean, now you get the idea. When I take pictures, like this car, the windows are rolled up, so I couldn't get the interior uh, of it. But, I mean, I try to get the interior of every vehicle and and try to get all the little small details, especially the uh, like that, the Mercury, and, you know, the name, and a broke man. I try. I want to try to get into those little details. I'm doing that more now when I'm doing photography. Uh -huh. Yeah, that yeah. is a nice touch for sure. And when yeah. it came to the Oldsmobile, I yeah. said, I don't know if it was a convertible or the hard top, but I'll give you one or both. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I had a hard top, but hey, convertible. There's nothing ever wrong with a convertible. Nope. Except, yeah, for, uh, except for a hot day where there's too much sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the weather we've been having lately. Yes. For sure. And Rob, reactions to this? Was that yellow one? Was that factory paint, that color? I don't, I don't know if that was that factory yeah, paint. That, that looks like it might have been repainted, maybe. I don't really know. Yeah. Because I don't think I really recall Osabio ever coming out with the racing stripes like that on their cars. No. Good point. No. Yeah. No. Maybe the good four four it. maybe the four four two, maybe, but a, a regular yeah. straight Osabio like this. I don't really recall them uh, as a factory option. No, so, yeah. I don't think, I think the four four two only had the two on the uh, the two on the hood. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Where, where the hood like is starting, yep, like yep. that right there. Which is a cool look, I must say. Yeah. Well, cool, cool. Yeah, thanks again, Michael, for doing that. That was that was Any really time. cool. Good job. And yeah. then uh, item number eight, our final video. Uh, this is a 1968 Pontiac Firebird, and this car is for sale by our friends at B&B Auto Sales. And I have to say, this car looks an awful lot like our friend's car, uh, Jake Dwinell. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, different shade of red. This car is red, but Jake's is orange, but very similar. Hi, this is Dirk from BNB Auto Sales. Uh, today we're going to show you our 68 uh, Pontiac Firebird uh, 400 YT code um, um, car, uh, V8 um, automatic. Uh, got, has had the front brake power, uh, disc conversion, power steering. Um, was an air car, it's missing the air components. Has had a repaint, single stage paint, and just a driver quality. I mean, I'll, you know, we've wet sanded and buffed it to give it a, a better shine, but you know, there's a couple prep issues right there. Chip right there, you know, so I mean, not a, I mean, it's got a good shine to it. And like you'd say in the business, probably call it a 10 footer, but they did it uh, kind of cheap, like right there, instead of taking off the wheel opening moldings, they just painted around them. So not a high quality job, just, uh, just like right here, didn't take the door handles off, but I'm right up front with you there. Same deal, some some overspray on there, and then the work around on the molding here. So, so just nice driver quality car, drives good. That right there is a whole bunch of receipts up on it, um, way back to 04. So, as you can see, the they redid the front seats, but they did it in Camaro. Um, trim instead of firebird see a different pattern there headliners all good got the console tilt wheel got a pioneer stereo works good you can see the fuel gauge works i have a new base coming for the armrest because it broke door shut pretty good but you can see old weather strips so just them little things to that um people should do they they didn't do like there you can see they um, the, they put some type of um, silicone or something on the edge of the trunk. So, like I said, runs and drives good. Looks good from from 10 feet. Like right here, you got some uh, prep issues in the paint, but we're just cruising around. Not a not a big deal. 
some overspray there. And that's all easily enough to fix. You can just uh, buy new uh, trim there and uh, it um, uh, will be, uh, and you can put that in and it'll look nice. So, like I said, nice driver quality car. Interior is pretty good if you don't mind a little mismatch on the seat. The interior won't need anything. And runs and drives super. Come out of California, so dry car. I'm not a rust bucket or anything, and it is a 400. So, you can see some rock chips or they didn't sand very good on that cowl. But like I said, got a good shine to it, so. You can see a gas gauge at a quarter of a tank. Does have tilt wheel. Other, the blinker works, but the indicator doesn't work on the inside. There's your radio. So I think I got some, the fan right now. We just got it in, so the blower motor doesn't work. So, here's your wipers. The horn works. You can see up there the tack works. So, and the dome light works down there and the one above works. So the only thing we gotta work on I think is the blower motor. But we'll show you the lights, let's take a listen to the engine. Missing all the compressor and lines and the brackets and the hoses. I don't believe the condenser is there either. Headlights. And your tail lights and the dual exhaust. It's got a nice sound to it. You know, like I said, you can see it's a nice dry car from California. Just an amateur paint job or cheaper paint job. A little belt squeal there. So any there's a bunch of receipts there for it, extra keys, owner's manual. So any questions, 605-695-7391. So yeah, thank you so much to B and B Auto Sales for that cool footage. Uh, Rob, I think it's your turn for the first reaction. That's a good car for somebody who wants to go to a cruise event. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep, you could also drive back and forth to work, take the kids to school in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like some of these Absolutely. guys have cars. I wouldn't want to park in the mall where the cruise events are. <laughs> yes. Yep. That'd be a nice yeah. car you could take. Looks good. Classic. Oh, yeah. Iconic lines for sure. Yeah. I would change the exhaust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Michael, reactions? Yes, uh, I know it's three things. Um, because I'm always looking for details in the car. First, it's in the door frame on the bottom. In the middle, it actually has a, a stamp logo, which is common for uh, GM uh, vehicles. It has a, a stamp right in the middle. It says Fisher. Uh, body. Oh, yeah, yeah. Body by Fisher. Body by Fisher. You know, uh, so that's uh, something I know is right off the bat. And then, obviously, uh, on the rear of the car, the rear uh, tail light, not in the back of the car, but the sails. Yep, you just passed it. It's that little t famous Pontiac symbol right there in the corner. The uh, side uh, uh, light. We're on the side, side yes, yeah, by the light there, yeah. Yep. I'm trying and to pause on it. Yep, there's a good one right there. Right but there, that's what yeah. I mean. It's got that Pontiac logo right there, and that is so awesome, you know. And that actually people, some people don't realize that thing does light up. And then finally, uh -huh. it's the, between the two taillights on the back of the car, it actually has a small little Pontiac Firebird little metal icon there. Which uh, no, it, there you go. You can see it right in the corner, right underneath the, uh, where you open yeah. up your the gas tank there. You know, Very nice. But Very it's, nice. The, it's the small little details like that that really is nice on the cars. And something else, I don't know it's on this car, 
but a lot of cars like Chevy, Chevrolet and uh, Buick and a lot of the GMs did it. It would say the name of the car by Chevrolet, you know, mm -hmm. so that's when they used to get pride to their cars. Now all that's long gone. True. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And Virgil? No more body by Fisher. True. <laughs> Yeah, not a very cool car. I'm like Rob. I would change that exhaust there. Yeah, I would give it that. Uh, what is that? That Trans Am. That Trans Am with the two come out off the side there. Yes, yeah. The old, old Firebird Burt Reynolds. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'd give it that exhaust right there. That would be a cool look. That, that is a, sound. That, that's still a pretty car though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we've got comments that have come in. Uh, let's see. Uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, awesome. Pontiac, good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you as Thank well, you. David. And then also uh, Virgil's friend Kyle says, sorry I missed the show tonight, boys. Hope to catch up with you next week. And he says he missed a, he heard he missed a 100. But we try anyway. <laughs> for yeah. sure. And we thank you for catching us, even if it's at the end. We appreciate that. Oh, yeah. You can, you and can then, always rewind, Kyle. Yes, exactly. Now, just a couple quick housekeeping items, um, and I'm going to put Virgil on the spot, and I apologize. I meant to take this up with you earlier, but you and I are going to a car show this coming weekend. Do you want to oh, talk yeah. that up real quick, just in case anyone oh. in the area wants to go? Uh -huh. Northeast ah. National. Northeast National Hot Rod Show up at, uh, what is that, Essex, Colchester, the the the, um, the, uh, the fairgrounds there. We just had the, uh, yeah, yeah. Not the state fair, but whatever fair we just had there. Champlain Valley, um, maybe? Yep, Champlain Valley Fair. And uh, so the Northeast Nationals will be going on there uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But also, too, going on this weekend, we have the, uh, the not, not to deal with us, but we also have the British Invasion. Oh, in Stone, oh, yeah. Oh. In Stone. So we kind of have two car shows there. So I may be going to the British Invasion catch uh there's a car i've been trying to show uh, i've been trying to catch i showed mike the picture yeah of, uh, i forget what i i can't know i don't don't know what year Rolls royce but if if i can get the owner to chat me up here real quick it'll be one of those cars that you guys would just be totally amazed by you know? yeah yeah try to I, get an interview on that if you can I, there is a <laughs> car museum that uh i heard it's all red cars it's down towards cape cod and it's um a museum in Medina to get to, and I would love to go there. It's all British cars, and they're all red. All red. Oh. Wow. Well, this the one I'm looking at is a Bentley, but it's a Woody. Woody. Oh, wow. Rolls Royce Woody. Crazy. Wow, that is a very rare car, then, because I have never seen one. Yes. That was, yeah. I, I was floored by it last year, and uh, it was, uh, I kind of chatted the guy up a little bit, but I really didn't, re you know, really didn't talk to him and his grandson that much. But it was one of those where I'm like, I, I'm trying to catch, uh, see if I can catch the glimpse of the unicorn again this year. Yeah, unicorn indeed. Yeah, hopefully you can catch. What day you going to show, Nigel? Uh, uh, I'll probably go there on Saturday. And then on Sunday you're going to the other one? Sunday. Uh, yep, Sunday with Mike at the Northeast Nationals there. Yeah. Now keep keep in mind, I don't know what's going on for the weather there, but. Saturday, Sunday, even Monday, they're saying showers and thunderstorms. So I don't know if that's going to dampen those plans, but hopefully you can get in there and do stuff and not have it get rained out. Yeah, it's yeah, only going to be showering rainy at the Patriot game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep that at Foxborough. Yeah. Yeah, but know yeah. what? Thursday is supposed to just be wicked. And I'm not going to the Fox Bros show tomorrow because it's going to be way too hot. I am not going to become shake and bake. Yeah. All right. No doubt. Now, one last thing. I do have a, to make an announcement, and it's it's off topic, but it is also kind of isn't. But uh, this Saturday in Lancaster, New Hampshire, the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame is having their induction ceremony, their seventh annual induction ceremony. And if you watch our other podcast, the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this whole thing is no stranger to you. Uh, and the reason I bring this up also is because our good friend Elaine, who we've been talking about, uh, she's going to be there. And that's our annual time when we get together for a visit with, with her and Paul. And here's a shot uh, from last year. There's her fiancé, Paul Lamontang. There's Elaine in the middle. And then, of course, the founder of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, our good friend, Midge Rosebrook, who's also a friend of Rob's. 
Um, and here's another shot from last year. We've got uh, a legendary racer from the early 70s, Chip Elwood. And then there's myself, Paul Lamontang, Midge Rosebrook. And then, of course, uh, Paul Paul and I, uh, we were at the uh, the pre-party the night before, and we got uh, Elaine took that picture. Uh, so if you're in the area around Lancaster and you like vintage snowmobiles Easter, and uh, vintage snowmobile racing from the early 70s, uh, it's the event of the season. Uh, it's going to be a who's who of Eastern snowmobile racers from the 60s and 70s. If you like that sort of thing, it's a don't miss kind of event. So that's all we've got for you tonight. Uh, real quick, uh, we're going to go around uh, clockwise. Michael, final uh, comment before we close? Uh, yeah, final comment would be if uh, if anybody uh, wants to see the classic cars, they can come to my car group. Or if they want to see a podcast of a particular car, you can get a hold of Mike, and Mike can forward that to me, and I can look what I have and give it to Mike. So if you got a car you like to see, um, you know, a particular car or just a bunch of cars, either way, I can send them to Mike, and he can do what he did with Virgil tonight, you know, and go through a, several photos of the same car in different angles. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're right. I forgot to give a shout out to your Facebook group, New England Classic Cars. It's an excellent Facebook group. Link in the description. Very much worth a look. Um, and Virgil, final comment. Uh, well, I just got to say thank you for the thank you for the uh, for the Cutlasses and the uh, and the Montego there. Uh, that was a great surprise for me. Um, yeah. And I'm just ready for these car shows this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be great. And Rob. Yeah. Good show. Great selection of cars. And don't forget, you can get one of these for five bucks this week. <laughs> yes. In fact, let me pop that graphic on the. Uh... And Rob, don't forget, yeah. you got to let me know some cars you're interested in because we can do a little surprise for you for the uh, memory lane. Good idea. I'll see if I can find my original car and send it to you. You know, any anything you want to see, I might just be lucky because uh, the other day I got a lot of what they call rat rods. Uh, they're all rusted up, but, they, uh, you know, it's like majorly customized trucks and stuff nice we'll get on to that yeah oh and we've got uh, david from alaska railroad saying sled talk already heck yeah i'm ready cool deal <laughs> well they <laughs> said have, we're gonna have a bad they said we're gonna have a bad winter so yeah so we got to be ready and i have to say david is uh, david from alaska <laughs> railroad is a frequent viewer of both this muscle car podcast and our vintage snowmobile podcast that's going to start up again uh, beginning of next month so, yeah, thank you so much for being a, a fan of both of those, David. We really appreciate it. All right. We're going to call it a night. Thank you, gentlemen, for being on. Also, to our viewers, we had a great time tonight. This really flew by. Um, but as always, show, Mike. thank you so much. Yes. And, uh, and as always, our last word goes to Amzoro. And uh, Oh, uh, no podcast next week. Going to do a, a rerun next week, but we'll catch you the week after. And, uh, yeah, have a great evening, everybody. Yeah, same here. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warranty for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, Amsoil says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the Amsoil bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the Amsoil. Amsoil's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever try petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once it, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. 
So Amsoil is an all-season oil, can give your better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running Amsoil than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And Amsoil is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, anything, from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, it's the benefit of the small engine. Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that Amsoil has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the Amsoil experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And, uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk, talk people through how this preferred customer program works. Amsoil has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, Amsoil ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a first customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the the step by step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program, so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there you see how i've circled in red that is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about this is what that page looks like in the lower right you're going to click join now this will pop up you select the duration you'd like whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart now once this this uh, pop-up goes away you'll be back on the main page and the upper left you'll see where i've got that red arrow it says shop now you can start shopping for products, and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there, and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far, <coughs> pardon me. And then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right, and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of the signature series, but that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. And if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now, let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. 
So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit and the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order, that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your AMSOIL preferred customer program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests. So it stands out as I'm checking my email and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products to cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-55594, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing Amsoil for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with Amsoil. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. it like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my Amsoil hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about Amsoil. People, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them, show them where they can buy the products. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? Amsoil's a fun business. Amsoil's been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game, too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.